right, so today we're going to look at bomb calorimetry. Now, we are looking at this as in a comparison to the way we will have done, the, or the experiment will have been done in a classroom, which is using the spirit burner. Um, and probably a can of some kind with a thermometer in water. Um, so we're, we're now looking at uh, bomb calorimetry as a comparison to that. So this is what a modern bomb calorimeter looks like over here. Okay, That's what it looks like. Um, this is our schematics. This is our diagram of all of the different parts. Okay, So let's see how this is different to yours. This is insulated, and this is insulated very, very well. It stops heat from escaping out. Okay, it's got a lid on top which seals it in. It is a closed system. Okay, so no heat can escape. Here you have a stirrer, and what the stirrer does is it allows this water to move around. It stops you from heating up just one section of the water. It allows an even heat distribution. Got the water bath, that's the same. But what is different is our sample where the reaction is happening is inside the water bath. By being inside the water bath, that means you don't have, so when you've got your um, your heat source down here, and you've got your can, or and blah, 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 you've got your can there, a lot of heat will be lost to the environment, okay? So triangles are simple for heat source in general. Um, so, by storing it in there, heat can be lost to the environment. That's fine. In fact, that's completely okay. That's what we want, because it will be le leaked into the water that we're heating up. That's bomb calorimetry. It is super duper simple, but the material, the, the the equipment for it is actually fairly expensive and complex, and that's why we don't really do it as well in a school. All right, see you later.